um, and welcome. So good afternoon for those of you guys uh, for whom it's the afternoon. Uh, from what I understand, we've got supporters from all across Canada, so it could be the afternoon, it could be uh, the morning. We're going to have a replay of this uh, for some folks who may not be able to make it this evening uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. So for those of you who are joining at 7 p.m., welcome. Um, if you guys want to, you guys are welcome to use the chat and you can just uh, type in where you're joining from. And that might be a nice way for us to kind of see who's out there. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Emmanuel Velasco, and I'm going to be your MC for uh, this afternoon. I'm also a member at the Strathmore Boulevard Church of Christ in Toronto, and I'm also the chair for the Bible College um, Board of Directors. So that said, uh, I do want to take some time or just a quick second to thank the many board members uh, and staff members who have worked to make this afternoon possible. Uh, it's so great to finally connect with you guys uh, in a way that is a little bit different. Um, you know, normally we, we have the uh, annual dinner in April, uh, but of course COVID kind of uh, has messed with not just the cadence of our year, but everyone's so um, it's nice to connect with you guys here in this uh, slightly different way. So just to get some housekeeping out of our way, okay. um, just a reminder for you guys to keep yourselves muted if you're not talking. Uh, you guys can use the chat. We do have several of our board members here and staff members that are uh, manning the chat. So if you've got some questions, they'll kind of jump in and, and answer those. Um, and uh, if you're really having trouble with the audio, maybe because of your internet connection, you guys may want to try dialing in. Um, I believe this will work. Um, there's a dial-in phone number, there's a meeting ID, and then the passcode. So um, you guys might want to just take a second to write that down if you're having some trouble with some internet connections. So I'll leave that up. Um, what are we gonna talk about today in our short time? Uh, we do have a, a relatively short agenda compared to the normal dinner that we would have to connect. Um, we're gonna give you guys some updates on the school and we're gonna talk about some of the needs as well. And uh, one of the questions that I think we'll be able to answer is what can God do with us? What can God do with us? Um, as I, I was doing some reflecting about the school, I thought, you know, sometimes it's easy for us to know what the impacts are of the school uh, when we talk about specific courses, specific people who are going to the school. Um, but it's really amazing to really think about the ripple effects that the school has within our brotherhood. So don't just think about the particular courses or the people who have gone to take courses. Let's also think about the churches, the congregations that those people are part of. What type of wonderful things have happened because of the school in those churches and the people in those, those congregations? There's a, there's a lot of ways to support the school. Uh, and today we're going to see and hear from a number of people and supporters, both past and present. And um, a couple that I would like to call out um, right now are, are two gentlemen who have committed their, their lives to support the church and Christian education. Uh, we'll be hearing them. Um, they'll be giving us our opening and closing prayers. Uh, Jeff Ellis and Dave Knutson. Uh, Jeff uh, has dedicated his life to ministry. He worked with the Great Lakes Christian High School uh, and also preached many years in Waterloo. His retirement project was actually to help revive the Great Lakes Bible College in the 90s. What a retirement project. <laughs> um, and he served in just about every capacity possible uh, at the school. Uh, teacher, uh, president, uh, and he continues to be a supporter behind, or to this day. Uh, and also Dave Knudsen, 
um, we'll hear from later on. He began teaching at the Bible College in the 2000s, I believe, and also served as president and dean until just about a couple of years ago when uh, he finally had enough of, of me. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> uh, but he, he uh, retired at, at that time. Um, an interesting story about David is that uh, my dad, my father, Moises Velasco, some of you guys may know, became a full-time student at the Bible College when he was 65 years old. And uh, when he told me that story, one of the things that he says is that he was surprised how much a young guy like Dave could teach him. So um, when I think about Dave, his efforts, and, and, uh, and Jeff, uh, about the, their efforts uh, with God's blessing have kept the dream of a Canadian Bible college alive through many years of transition. And so um, we're going to hear from Jeff and Dave later on, and uh, a thanks to them and all the other uh, past, past workers and supporters. So with that, I'm actually going to hand things over to uh, Jack Ellis, who's going to give us our opening prayer. And uh, Jeff, you may just need to uh, unmute yourself. How about I'll give Dave, I'll give Jeff a call. Maybe Dave will switch you guys. You can... Uh... Open us in prayer, and I'll call Jeff up, and he can close us. That sounds good. Thanks, Jamie. Dave, can you uh, just switch the clock and open us in a prayer? I sure can. <clears throat> okay, let's, uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank, you, we thank you so much for the Bible College. We thank you for the opportunity that... Um, that the college affords for <clears throat> students to engage in serious preparation and concentrated preparation for your kingdom. Father, we thank you for each one serving at the Bible College. We pray your blessing uh, upon them and those who are being served. Father, as Emmanuel has pointed out, there, there is a, a ripple effect that we hope for. Um, we hope that some can teach others who in turn will teach others and in this way be a blessing not only to your church but through your church to the world so father we ask that you would bless this multiplying effort uh, for the further advance of the gospel uh, father help us to grow in our vision uh, not only for the bible college but also for the church and to see uh, ways in which you are at work in us and through us. And Father, help us to help us to see your vision for the world, a world where your word has gone everywhere and where people everywhere have at least been given the opportunity to hear and to respond in obedience. So Father, we ask for your blessing on the church, the Bible college, those who work in it, and those who attend. And Father, we ask this uh, ultimately uh, for the good of the church, for the salvation of the world, and to your honor and glory. Bless our time together today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm just going to now introduce Jim Holston. Uh, Jim Holston currently uh, resides in Houston, but he has long-standing long-standing ties with uh, the Brotherhood here in Canada and Ontario particularly. Um, he served both with the Tintern Church of Christ in the Niagara region and then later came to teach at the Bible College in the early 2000s, uh, where I believe he spent over 10 years. Um, so it's wonderful to have Jim here with us. I know um, so many past students that have taken classes with, with them when, you, when you, uh, they think about the Bible, Bible College, think about um, Jim's wonderful teaching, and um, we're 
blessed to have him with us today uh, to share a little bit of a message. Welcome back to you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, th I thank the board for the opportunity to be here and uh, to speak to you. I know a lot of you from the past. I was in, uh, I was in Ontario for 21 years and um, I taught at the Bible College for 15, first five as a part-time volunteer and the last 10 or 10 and a half as a, uh, um, as a full-time faculty member. And um, when we, uh, when we had the uh, run through with the board earlier, I, I, I knew almost everybody, everybody in the run through and uh, it feels very warm <laughs> and very welcoming. So it's, it's, it's good. To, it's good to be with you. You know, I, I don't have to say, I, I don't have to give too many illustrations of what we've experienced over the last year. It's been, it's been a, it's been a difficult year because of the pandemic, the uncertainty that comes with that, the, um, so not only have, have we experienced lockdowns, but also the economic problems that, that has come in, in connection with the pandemic and the, um, and even the, even the social and psychological problems that have come because, because of it. And, and a lot of us have had, had issues that had nothing to do with the pandemic. Uh, you know, just because somebody ends up in the hospital doesn't mean that it necessarily had anything to do with COVID. And, um, and so there, there are a whole variety of things that we have faced over the last, uh, over the last year. And uh, somehow I think when, when the clock turned from 2020 to 2021, people uh, had kind of a sigh of relief and um, here, that's when we had the deep freeze, which I'll say a little bit more about later. Uh, for Houston, it was a deep freeze. And, uh, and after that, people said, I thought 2021 was going to be better, and it hasn't been so far. So there's still, there's still a lot of uncertainty. And, but the message I want to give has to, do, has to do with certainty. And it has to do with growth, continued growth, even in the midst of uncertainty and even in the midst of a pandemic. And uh, for, our, uh, for our meditation here, I, I want to, um, uh, I'm gonna rely very heavily on the, on the book of Daniel. There are two, two themes in the book of Daniel that I'm, that I'm going to be emphasizing. The same two themes appear in the book of Revelation. And that's not just a coincidence. The book of Revelation draws very heavily on the book of Daniel. And, um, and the situation in many ways, the situation that Daniel experienced and the situation that John experienced, in many ways they were similar. And so the, the fact that these two things appear in both is not, is not a surprise really, or shouldn't be. So when we go, go to the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel was written over a, a period of time uh, and the, the happenings in, in, in Daniel were over Quite a quite a period of time that uh, encapsulated both uh, Babylonian, the beginning of the Babylonian exile, and uh, then the Persian period as well. And and the first, there are two pillars, two pillars for the Christian life, and two pillars for our ongoing growth as people and our ongoing growth as a church. There 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 are two principles, two pillars for. Um, for us. The first pillar is that um, to know that God is in charge in spite of appearances. God is in charge in spite of appearances. And that goes throughout Daniel. I'll, I'll just give a couple of illustrations of it. In chapter two, the, the greatest of the Babylonian kings, Nebuchadnezzar, has a dream. Uh, Daniel is the only one, because God is working in him, he's the only one that's able to give Nebuchadnezzar the dream and interpret it. And the, the dream had to do with this huge statue that was made of gold in four parts, basically gold and silver and uh, bronze and then uh, iron 
and somewhat mixed with uh, with clay. And the, the the statue, the four parts of the statue had to do with four kingdoms. First, there would be the Babylonian, Nebuchadnezzar, which would be followed by the Persian, which would be followed by the Greek of uh, Alexander and his and his Greeks, and then finally the Roman Empire. And in this dream, you have this huge statue, huge statue, and then there is this rock cut out of a mountain, but not out of not by human hands. This rock comes and strikes the foot of the statue, and the statue crumbles to dust. And then the rock grows into a mountain that fills the entire earth. That image is an image of the kingdom of God. The kingdoms of humans, human kingdoms, come and go one after another, but the kingdom of God comes and never goes. It, it, it is the everlasting, it's an everlasting kingdom and it's a kingdom that fills the earth. Then later on in Daniel, in Daniel chapter seven, there are four kingdoms pictured again, same four, but now they're pictured in a different way. Rather than this huge statue with a human face, it is four beasts, wild, untamed, violent beasts that come out of the sea. And in contrast to the four beasts now is not a rock that grows into a mountain, but now it is, it's the kingdom of God with a human face. First, there is uh, the, the Ancient of Days. It's a picture of God himself. The Ancient of Days holds court. And while he's holding court, there is this one who comes to him. This is in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. In my vision at night, I looked. And there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshiped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And so this one, like a son of man, comes before the Ancient of Days, comes before God the Father, and he is given, uh, well, and he comes with the clouds of heaven, which he's like a son of man, but he's, he comes with the clouds of heaven, which in the Old Testament is a sign of deity. God, it is God who comes with the clouds of heaven. He approaches the Ancient of Days, he's led into his presence, and he is given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, men of every language worship him. And then it speaks of his kingdom being an everlasting kingdom and a universal kingdom. That's, that's the kingdom that, that we are part of. And in, and in Daniel's day, on one level, that would have seemed absurd. Nebuchadnezzar was in control. Later on in uh, Daniel 7, it's the Persians who are in control. They, they have the power. But Daniel is given a vision or given visions and an interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream that says there is something in the world, something coming into the world that's more powerful and that is truly universal. None of these kingdoms were universal. All of them seemed to have all the power, but they didn't. They faded away and the kingdom of God came as a universal kingdom and also as an everlasting kingdom. And that's the kingdom that we are privileged by grace to be part of in Jesus Christ. It's, it's not a, I mean, it's important to note that this one, like a son of man, that uh, Jesus' favorite term for himself, the one he used most often of himself was son of man. And I believe it goes directly to Daniel 7. So that's one principle. God is in control in spite of appearances. Second principle, we must be faithful no matter what the cost. We must be faithful no matter what the cost. In Daniel, again, in chapter 3, Daniel and his friends have been taken to Babylon to be, we find in chapter 1, to be re-educated. The Jew, good Jewish boys are supposed to become good Babylonian boys. 
and uh, they, they resist that. They, they see that for what it is and they remain, they remain the people of God. In chapter three, Nebuchadnezzar builds this statue and, uh, out of gold, and he commands that uh, when the trumpets sound, when the, when the Babylonian band plays, everybody's supposed to bow down to this statue. Well, the band plays. Daniel probably isn't there because nothing is said of him, but his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refuse to bow down. And when the king is told, he's furious. He throws and he, he threatens them with, with being thrown into a, a fiery furnace. And, and uh, he says, what God can deliver you out of my hands? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, our God can deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to your statue or worship your gods. That's a, that's a sign of faithfulness and commitment. They're thrown into the fiery furnace. It's so fiery that it kills the ones who threw them, throw them in. But they walk around, and after they've had a holiday, Nebuchadnezzar calls them out. They come out, not scorched, not singed. God has delivered them. Later in chapter 6, different king, different kingdom. Now it's the Persian king and the Persian kingdom. And he is, he is manipulated, actually, into, into, a, um, into making a, a decree that everybody is to uh, pray to him not pray to any other gods, just to him. Uh, Daniel now has a choice. Is he going to be faithful to God and continue his praying to God, or is he going to, or is he going to go by the king's edict? Daniel doesn't change anything. His, uh, his life has been one of praying three times a day to the God of heaven, and he simply continues doing what he's always done out of faithfulness to God. He's turned in by his enemies. He's thrown into a lion's den. Next morning, the king comes, and Dan, Daniel is sitting there with the lions. I kind of I like to uh, vision him petting them. <laughs> but anyway, he's sitting there with the lions. They have not eaten, eaten him. Maybe they're not hungry. But they take him out, and they throw his accusers in, and I'm uh, surprised that the lions actually are hungry. So they devour the accusers. But again, we see both with Daniel's three friends and Daniel himself, they did not know at the beginning that they would be delivered. But their commitment was that whether they were delivered or whether they would not be delivered, they would be faithful. And we are called to be faithful. And part of faithfulness means that we will grow spiritually and grow uh, grow as the people of God. We've already seen it. It's of the very nature of the kingdom. The kingdom is like a rock that grows into a mountain that fills the whole earth. It is like the son of man who comes with the clouds of heaven and, and people of all nations, all peoples worship him. Uh, in, in Matthew uh, chapter 13, Jesus tells a, a parable of uh, a mustard seed, a very tiny, tiny seed that grows into a great bush the size of a small tree. And his, his point is that the kingdom of God is like that. It comes as a very tiny seed in a person's life or in, a, or in the world, and it grows into something great. We may, we may think that in the midst of pandemic and all the things that surround that, that, um, that growth, either as individuals as, or, or as the kingdom of God, that that somehow is stifled or is impossible or we're, uh, we're in a holding pattern until finally the pandemic goes away and we can do something again. But that's not true. That, that is the lie of Satan. The pandemic shouldn't stop us from doing what we do. Faithfulness, by the way, is more than, it's, it, it includes, but it's more than going to church on Sunday morning, going to worship. We need to do that, but faithfulness is more than that. And uh, in, in a time of uncertainty and in a time of crisis, we're still called to be faithful. And um, that involves different things. For instance, pandemic, 
oh, this stifles us. No, it doesn't stifle us. If you're, if you're in lockdown right now, how great is that? What I mean is you've got time and you've got space to study the word of God. A lockdown will not prevent you from doing that. You've got lots of time to spend time in prayer, to stand, spend time in study. Uh, the very fact that you're, you're in this session today means you've got access to the internet, which means there are all kinds of th there are bad things on the internet, but there are all kinds of good things, including you can take, you can take courses at uh, GLBC. Uh, but not only that, even though we're locked down, it doesn't mean, even if you are locked down, it doesn't mean that you can't have contact with people. I have a group of people who, with whom I am in continual contact. Um, some of them are people I'm mentoring, discipling, if you will. Uh, some of them regularly will ask me or, or want feedback on biblical or spiritual questions. And we use text. Sometimes we use email, but most, most often we use either texts or phone calls. And, and we keep the dialogue going. And, um, and you can do that. You're not limited by, by COVID in, in doing that. Or, uh, or earlier I mentioned the, the deep freeze here in Houston. In some ways, that's just got to be amusing to you because deep freeze just means it got under, it, it got colder than freezing, but not nearly what most of you uh, experience. But you have to understand something about Houston. Houston isn't used to freeze. The houses aren't made for it. And when the freeze came and freezing rain came, a lot of our energy comes from windmills. The windmills froze up. The, the uh, coal plants and the gas plants couldn't handle it. So we had what they, ha, what they called rolling blackouts, but th the truth was is they rolled in and they didn't leave. Some people had power all along. Some of them, some of us had it off and on. Some didn't, didn't have any power for a while and then it came on. And so th there are a lot of problems. Did that stifle? the kingdom of God, it didn't have to. People helped people. People who had power took food to people who didn't. People who had heat invited people who didn't have any into their homes to, uh, to help them, uh, to get them out of, the, out of the cold. And as bad as it was, being faithful meant that we could grow in that experience and grow in our ability to serve, and, and so even in a time of uncertainty and a time of crisis, whatever it is, because there are always crises in one way or another, either for us as individuals or, or us as a group. And, and in the midst of crisis, uh, we can still and must still be faithful no matter what. So remember the two pillars. God is in charge in spite of appearances, and we must be faithful no matter what the cost. And if we, if, we, if we build our lives on those two principles, we can have a vibrant, go, growing life that, that looks more and more like the, the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's uh, close with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we've had together, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the example that we have of Daniel and his friends, of, of their total commitment, their faithfulness to you. We thank you, Father, for your examples. That are so, there are so many of them of how you are in charge. And we need to remember that the kingdoms of, and the nations of this world come and go, but your kingdom has come and it will never go. And it is still in the process of growing and filling the earth. And Father, we thank you, and we ask for your continual blessing, and we ask you to help us to be part of the growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Thank you, Jim. What a great message for us to, to keep in mind during these times. Uh, and not just during COVID, but throughout our whole lives, really. Um, one of the things that occurred to me was a lot of times we, we think about uncertainty as a, um, with a negative connotation. But what I loved about your message, Jim, was that it really brought that positive, positive uh, mindset to it. Thank you again. Um, moving to the next point in our uh, agenda, I wanted to hand things to Jay Manintim. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know Jay, uh, he's a full-time minister at the Central Church of Christ in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and has been for almost four years. I do know he has also spent time uh, in, uh, in uh, Quebec, uh, Montreal, Ontario, and Barrie, and now is in Manitoba. So who knows, maybe in a few years, he'll be moving on to Saskatchewan. Uh, I'm gonna hand things over to um, Jay, who uh, was recently appointed as a member of the GLBC Board of Trustees. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screens and I will allow uh, Jay to do so. Do you guys see that? Yeah, Am I sharing it? Okay, good. Um, thank you, Em, for the introduction, and thank you, Jim, for that very encouraging message. Um, I am really excited today for two reasons, okay? Uh, one is that if you look at your screen there, if you look at how many participants there are, it says 36. There's 36 screens right now uh, participating in this particular event. So thank you for coming here. And I know in those screens, in many of those screens, there's two or more people, right? So there's more than 36 people here. So thank you, that's a, that's a point of excitement for me. And the second uh, is that my job today is straightforward. I'm here to tell you guys some good news. Like how awesome is that? Like I'm one of the newest guys at the board and they give me this Gucci job of telling you guys some good news. So thank you. So for, I would like to just um, tell you about some of the successes uh, that GLBC has had in this current school year. And as Jim pointed out, yes, success during the pandemic, it's crazy, right? Um, it's amazing that growth happens when it's when it when things are tough right kind of like working out and developing a six-pack you know you have to work up for that pandemic as well has uh, has uh, given us some some successes so um part of that good news and the crux of that good news i'm going to share with you now this is bottom line uh, bottom line up front here and i i, I want to thank paul burston for this piece of information that uh, i'm sharing with you today so at the start of the school year okay I'm going to flash a number on that screen. This is the number of students that we have at the start of the school year. Guess how many students we have as of this term. I want you guys to say a number in your head. Like, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't unmute yourselves. Just say a number in your head. Right now we have 63. That's a 370% increase in the number of students. And our students span uh, 10 time zones, if I remember what Paul has, has written in his email to me, 10 time zones from mountain time here in North America, all the way to Kenya and East Africa, from New York to New Mexico in the USA. So amazing news, right? But I don't wanna end, like I could just end my presentation there. Like, you know, thank you very much for listening, I'm good. But I wanna share with you guys why this is, like why, why, is this, why, why are we successful? So there are many reasons, but today I want to share with you just two, okay? I'm going to share with you the first one, which is very quick. I want to mention that because people is the number one resource that we have. And then I'm going to spend a lot of time on the number two reason why. So first reason is because of our people, because of the faculty and adjunct staff that we have, and because of the admin staff that we have. These individuals, right, are the ones that uh, deal directly with our students, they serve our students directly. They, they are the pointy end of our mission at the college. They're amazing, they're fabulous, okay? 
So uh, I want you guys to give them a round of applause in your minds right now. A round of applause for all of these guys. But I would be also remiss if I didn't mention the amazing um, members of the board uh, that we have as well. These guys um, work tirelessly behind the scenes as well to move the college forward. So reason number one are our people. Number two is because of our academic offerings and specifically this reason, because of our new learning paradigm. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but this is one of the biggest reasons why we have a lot of success because of the le learning paradigm that is Bible, ministry, and worldview. And I think the one word that I could describe this um, in terms of the success that has brought the college is this word, holistic, right? Um, it's, a, it's a five point word for me, man, like holistic. I feel like a scholar right now. Like it is all encompassing, it is comprehensive, and it, it, uh, it integrates every aspect of our Christian faith in equipping disciples. That is what the Bible ministry and worldview, worldview paradigm does. Okay, let me explain further. Okay, this learning paradigm has enabled the college to provide a truly all encompassing, truly holistic uh, university level Bible education program to prepare students for effective spiritual living, service, leadership, and evangelism. Uh, the idea is that Christian training and education encompass the, the, the entirety of Christian service and worship, right? Number one, it's not only the passage of information, Bible. It's not only the knowledge, right? We, we, can, we can teach ourselves many things, but it's, it doesn't end there. Yes, it starts there. It's very foundational. Bible is very foundational, but it doesn't end there. We need to understand how that information forms our worldview, how it transforms us so that we can lead to the third part of the paradigm, which is ministry. The Bible transforms us so that we, God can use us to serve his kingdom, right? In many other circles, uh, some uh, Christian authors and some uh, scholars uh, give this paradigm different terms like have you heard of the three h's the head heart and hands head that's the bible that's the information but it doesn't end there right heart the holy spirit through his word transforms our heart our worldview the way that we see things and when that happens god uses our hands to work in his kingdom in our ministries what an amazing what an amazing paradigm so as an offshoot of this holistic view the college is now able to serve two big groups of Christians in our congregations. You guys know what those two big groups are? The folks who are leaders and ministry leaders. But it doesn't stop there. They also are now serving. And I, don't, I know I'm pretty sure they have been, but since I, I, I'm looking at it from, from sort of the outside looking in, regular members who just want to learn more so they can grow and serve. Leaders and regular members are being served by the college at this time. Not just the ones that are, oh, I want to get a degree, a Bible degree. I want to be in full-time ministry. Those two, two groups of people are being served right now. And I'm going to give you some concrete examples later on. Okay. Uh, so um, that said, uh, I'm just going to show you some, some, some slides that show you the current uh, offerings that we have in terms of courses. And again, I want to thank Paul Burston for this information because he met with, his, with, with their students like just a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday or two days ago and talked about what they will be offering uh, in, in the next 12 months uh, at the college. So for September to December, fall 2021, these are the courses that they're gonna, take, uh, they're gonna provide. Okay, I know you guys can read that. Uh, the, I'm pretty sure this slide is gonna be available. It's, on, it's gonna be on the website as well, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, that's for the fall 2021, starting in September. And then after that, in, in the spring, there's going to be these uh, courses that, are, that will be uh, available. And then uh, this is where um, a lot of the uh, regular members really, uh, really benefit. This one here, the hybrid courses. Amazing, very practical stuff to equip our people for ministry. So let me just say this, okay? Um, these courses are challenging. I know that because I'm taking one right now, right? These courses are ch challenging 
and they really equip students to learn scripture and transform their hearts so that so that God can use them for service in his kingdom. We mentioned that earlier. But these courses are also very affordable. Okay? Uh, so that means that um, students are receiving two things, quality and great value for their investment. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm one of the guys that are on that counseling course right now, Christian counseling course. Uh, I'm taking the course right now, and I'm telling you, there's, uh, there is this uh, learning, what do you call that? There's a word for it. There's a learning management system, an LMS that the college is using right now called Populi, and it's so organized. I know exactly what, uh, uh, what my professor is trying to, I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know the notes, the notes are there. The readings are there, the assignments are there, and I know exactly what's going on with the course, and I can manage it myself as a student because of Populi. So it is very organized, and uh, it, it gives me an opportunity to navigate and facilitate access to the course while at the same time maintaining communication with my instructor. Very good. So um, I would be remiss as well if I didn't tell you about the archives, okay? There's also archives that you can sign up on to take you can take these archives as courses at your own time. And Jim told us about that. We have so much time in our hands right now that the, you know, one of the best uses for that time is go to the archives and learn, equip yourselves, uh, equip ourselves uh, so that we can serve better. Okay, so I think I have one last, this is my last slide. Okay, and I'm, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask that question. How can GLBC serve you in your congregation? Okay. Um, I want you to ask that question to yourselves, but I, I would like to answer that for myself in two ways. So I can answer this question in the point of view of my own self and from the point of view of my own congregation. So first, from my own point of view, um, I, I, I mentioned that uh, I'm taking that counseling course, right, uh, with Ryan Fraser. So that counseling course has been extremely valuable to me personally. So this week, we talked about a very important topic of, of concern within our homes and families, addictions and pornography. As a full-time minister in, in, in one of the congregations of the Churches of Christ, this is one of the biggest challenges that I've had to deal with when I support our youth, our families, and our married couples today. Huge. So... Learning from books and online resources is good, but these things only go so far. Not only did I learn from a certified family counselor and, an, and, and a professor at a, at, a certi at, a, at a university, I also now have a line of communication open with my instructor. I can email him, right, and ask him questions that I have in my ministry. And this is also equally important. I also now am connected with 30 other Christians across Canada that are taking the same course. There's community now, right? So that's from my own point of view. Now, from the point of view of my congregation, our congregation believes that every member is a minister. I'm pretty sure you guys have that in your congregations as well. That's a Church of Christ thing, right? It's a good thing. But that said, we take the growth of our members seriously. Right? And we look at Great Lakes Bible College to provide formal education to the members of our congregation. We put our money where our mouth is. Right? Currently, there are 19 members of our congregation taking the counseling process and skills course. Because we believe that these people, uh, you know, these pe we, we put out the, the, the call. There's this course. And it's going to equip you. And there's, there are 19 of our members that actually uh, signed up. And I'm one of them. My wife is one of them. Miles McMillan, our other full-time minister here at Central, is a part-time student at GLBC. He's currently taking the counseling course and also the Greek course. So we're all in on this uh, partnership with GLBC. We trust them to provide this very valuable resource to us. And so I ask, if you have not done so yet, please check out GLBC's academic offerings and consider taking or auditing their courses yourself. Okay, you can help us out in that regard. Um, you will benefit from it, from its spiritual uh, formation, and your home congregations will do too. 
So uh, thank you for your time and uh, for listening. Thank you so much, Jay. Um, by the way, uh, I'm also taking a course from the archive. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, taking uh, Restoration History with Paul Burston from 2019. <laughs> so he's, he's my, uh, my buddy in the car when I'm, when I'm driving my kids to school. I'm listening to, to those lectures. And so it's a great opportunity, not just for uh, ourselves, for our congregations, we can encourage other people to take courses too. Um, because of my uh, involvement with the school and, and taking some courses, my wife is actually in the counseling course with Jay and uh, at the invitation of Paul. Um, you know, this is, this is good stuff. So thank you, Jay, for, for those reminders. Um, next, I wanna hand things over to John Smith. Uh, John currently preaches for the Church of Christ in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. He and his wife Jane have served the Churches of Christ in Western Canada for over 35 years. And John graduated with his Bible degree from Western Christian College. And that interest in Christian education carries on today as he is now part of the board with the Great Lakes Bible College. So John's going to share a little bit of information with us uh, about uh our giving so john over to you thank you Ian. and uh and thank you to all of you who are joining us and uh and are being with us on this presentation today greetings from Weyburn, saskatchewan where i serve a congregation of about 90 give or take the covid effect uh, growing up on the Canadian prairies and being raised in a family with strong faith and dedication of the church, I've observed uh, two ironic trends. On the one hand, uh, the Bible is uh, becoming increasingly accessible, uh, more accessible than I ever remember. Um, you know, I could take this... Uh, screen device that I have here and I can access any passage with just a, a couple of button clicks and be reading any passage of the scripture uh, any time of the day anywhere that I am anywhere that where I can uh, be on my uh, device and that's uh, that's a huge shift uh, from the way it's ever been before uh, the word of God has never been so available as it is now but the other trend that I've witnessed uh, and, and that is kind of ironic is that the, uh, the biblical knowledge of, of people in general has declined since the time I was a young child, even uh, sadly, uh, even members of, of the church. Um, maybe, it's tr maybe it's different in the churches where you are, uh, but that's, that's been my experience and, uh, and Sadly, I think it's, it's probably true for uh, most people across, and most churches across uh, North America and, uh, and Canada. But as, uh, as we've just uh, heard from Jay, uh, there are now available to us uh, wonderful opportunities to uh, educate, to study, to learn, uh, to provide resources for individuals, for families, and for churches uh, to know God's word. So that's wonderful. I want, I want to keep this uh, in front of you. Here's the message that I'm hearing today and that I, I want you to, to carry with you. Uncertainty, you know, we live in times of uncertainty, as, as Jim uh, talked about, but uncertainty is an opportunity for God and his people. And, uh, and that's what I want to talk to you about now is the opportunity that we have uh, to meet the challenge and to, uh, and, and to try and, and turn things in, in, a, in a good direction. Uh, that's why I, I see great value in Great Lakes Bible College and its offerings to churches, families, and individuals. I see here an, an opportunity for God and his people 
uh, to really come to the forefront and provide some good things in our time. Uh, we are a small school. Great Lakes Bible College is small uh, as, as far as a physical plant and institution. Uh, and we are a private college, which puts certain limitations on us. But that doesn't limit, <laughs> that doesn't limit the number of people that can be involved and the opportunities and the doors that God will open to us. And so, uh, but because of those realities, we do depend on the generosity of donors like you to cover our operating costs. And so we just want to uh, highlight some of those ways in which you uh, can be involved. And we thank many of you who, who have been involved and will continue to be involved in the financial support of our school. We thank you for helping us to have both full-time and adjunct professors, for having good teaching materials, for administration, technical equipment, upgrades and support, uh, communications and promotions, and uh, a whole bunch of other things that I haven't even mentioned. All of these are needed to provide what we do, but they come with a price. And we thank you for helping us meet uh, that cost. Our current donation budget is $115,000. Uh, but mostly because of uh, COVID, mostly because of the challenging times we're in, we have experienced a shortfall in donations. Fortunately, this has been partially offset uh, because we qualified for a government subsidy. Uh, but we know that you want to help us meet our budget and secure the future of our college. Remember, uncertainty is an opportunity for God and his people. Uh, that's why many of you have joined us today, and we thank you. Uh, whether you are here because you plan to and are prepared right now to partner with us going forward, or because you wanted to know how the cause to which your past donations is currently thriving, uh, or if you seek to be better informed on what GLBC is currently doing. We hope that what you've heard today was helpful. And if you have questions, or you need any more information, or you have some feedback to share with us, please stay online with us, and uh, you can chat live with board members and others uh, after, uh, after we have a closing prayer to, to wind up the presentations. So I just want to highlight a, a couple of things uh, for you, and you you should you you will see uh, that if you go to our website glbc.ca, there are uh, and slash give. There are a number of ways to do online donations, which is uh, one of the most accessible and easiest ways to do that. You click on donate, and you'll see options to donate now to make e-transfers or to send a donation by mail. And uh, uh, you're seeing a sample of, of that uh, page when it opens up on the screen. Uh, options from which you may choose when you donate now, um, really you can, uh, you can send us uh, amounts, uh, whatever you're, you're able to manage. Uh, we did a mail out of, of a card and a poster and some other information and maybe you have that handy and you'll see that, uh, you know, we're suggesting a gift of $500 or 250 or 100 or 50 or, or whatever uh, lump sum single donation you're able to give at this time. You can do that on site uh, with a credit card or another account uh, on, on the website, that's the easiest way, uh, most accessible way. You would get emailed to you an immediate donation receipt for doing that. And, uh, and we thank you to those who, who uh, take advantage of that option. Uh, but I want to highlight uh, another option which is uh, available to you as well and that you can set up, which is to donate monthly. Uh, and, uh, you know, the information that we sent out uh, recommends, you know, a, a monthly donation of, of $100 or $75 or 50 or 25, whatever amount works 
uh, for you in, in a monthly budget. You know, a lot of us uh, pay for our cell phones, uh, for our cable hookup and, and, other, and other things with a monthly payment every month that's just automatically debited from uh, our account or from our credit card. And that actually is a very good way to give. You know, in, in, uh, if, if $50 is a, is a possible gift that you could do on a monthly basis over the course of a year, that adds up to a $600 donation. And uh, maybe, maybe you're not able to send that as a lump sum, but, and maybe you would find it challenging to lay aside that amount in, in, in increments throughout the year, but it, it makes it easier and quite, uh, uh, possible and convenient to do that through monthly uh, pre-authorized payments. And so if you want to set that up with your bank account or credit card, um, again, you can you can go online uh, or if you need extra help, you could always call the business office at the school uh, if you're having trouble making that happen. But you, I think you'll find the online uh, options for doing that uh, work very well. You could use your credit card or PayPal just to make a, a single lump sum donation. And you also have options when you, when you use uh, the site there, you'll see that there's options to dedicate your gift uh, in honor of someone. And the school could uh, you know, contact them or, or you could opt to contact them yourself and say that you, to the family, or, or, or to whoever it was that you were making uh, your donation in honor of someone. And, and people have done that and that's a very beautiful way. And we thank you uh, for making those gifts and, uh, and honoring people in that way. Uh, of course, the online information also, uh, and the mailed out information also gives you the address to which you uh, can mail checks uh, this is for Canadian donors to mail to Great Lakes Bible College and, and the address uh, where they are received is in Beamsville, Ontario. And uh, that address should appear uh, either on the screen uh, in the chats or uh, you will have gotten it in, in the mail out. You'll, you probably got an envelope in the mail out material or it's on the website and uh, very easy to do that way as well, if you prefer to send your donation by mail. Uh, of course, we welcome that as well. Another way that uh, GLBC has been uh, especially blessed by, by your generosity is by bequests from wills and estates. And if you are uh, interested in making a, uh, a donation to the school or to setting up a, a bequest, uh, that would happen in that way, uh, then I, I also recommend that you stick around and, and question uh, uh, some on the board who are able to give you details about how to do that. And I just want to return to the thought that we've been emphasizing throughout, and that is that uh, uncertainty, and we are in times of uncertainty, uh, is an opportunity for God and his people to do something significant. This is, this is your opportunity, this is our opportunity through Great Lakes Bible College uh, to share the word of God in a time when people need the message more than ever. And so I, I just uh, want to encourage you to participate um, or at least to, to ask questions, to stay informed, uh, give us your contact information if we don't already have it so that we can let you know what we're doing and you can continue to be updated. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for your generous support of Great Lakes Bible College, uh, without which we would not be here. Stay online and visit with us in a few moments after the prayer uh, to conclude our presentations. and. Uh, and God bless all of you. Thank you, John. Uh, just before I hand things over to, um, to Jeff, 
Uh, Jeff, maybe we could just do a quick sound check to make sure that you're there. So you might need to unmute yourself and I'll give you, a, I'll, I'll just talk and um, you can just give us a hello whenever you're ready. But while Jeff is trying to get his, um, his mute button working, I just want to say a, a couple of closing words. I want to say, number one, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for being part of this um, and supporting the school. Um, I want to say thank you to the board and to the staff as well who have, have made uh, this happen today. Uh, and especially the staff who continue to work with the students every single day. Um, earlier on, I asked the question, what can God do with us? What can God do with us? And to answer that question, as we think about um, today, everything that you've heard, uh, I ask you to think, ask, ask this question, or, or think about seven generations. What has God done for us in the past seven generations? Hasn't he been faithful to us through times of trial? Hasn't he been faithful to us? And now I ask you, what will he do with us for the next seven generations? What will he do with us for the next seven generations? There are people that we don't even know about that need to come to God's kingdom, that need to be ministered to, that need to learn about God's word. And that's the heart of, uh, of what we're here for. So as I, I think about all the people that uh, I'm seeing on the screen today, the, the people who have been uh, part of the Bible college and, and the work uh, to uh, Jim, to Dave, uh, to Jeff, these are people who have been part of the school. There are people who are part of the school today and there will be people who uh, will be part of God's kingdom for many years to come. Uh, this is what I pray and uh, we are gonna have some time afterwards for those who wanna visit, but to close things out, I'm gonna hand things over to uh, Jeff to close us out in a prayer. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, Jeff. You can. Wonder of wonders. <laughs> it's been a privilege to uh, hear the presentations. Uh, Jen's lesson was right on, and the other statements gave me a, a great thrill. You might not realize it, but this is the 44th year that Great Lakes Bible College has been operating. 19 years in Bemisville, starting in 1952. 25 years in Waterloo, starting in 1996. So the 45th year and starting the 45th year coming up. What a marvelous time to be alive. I. I just read a book about the assassination of James Garfield, the president of the United States in the late 19th, 19, 19th century. And his doctor refused to believe in uh, germs. And he literally killed Garfield uh, by inserting his... Um, badly infected hands into the body. Well, consider that from then till now, um, the pandemic to me is a tremendous indicator of the greatness of the creation of God. What a change has taken place. When I was a boy, the best we could do with radio were, were crystal sets. Believe that. When I was a boy, crystal sets. Now we span the globe with these messages. And as I heard the presentations today, 
the prospect for serving God and promoting the study of God's word uh, has grown greater and greater. Again, our folks might not realize it, but Great Lakes uh, in the beginning signified a vision for the school uh, that would be in both the United States and Canada where the basin of the Great Lakes uh, actually served. So it was to be a, a school that served in, in two nations. Well, it didn't quite make that um, objective then, but it's making the potential of serving around the world today with the technology that we have. And I'm excited by the staff that is presently serving. What wonderful men. And um, we, we need to be, of course, great supporters of them. Well, let's, let's pray as we uh, bring this uh, program to a conclusion. Gracious Father in heaven, the creator of all that is, who inspired the word of God, such a marvelous testament to your greatness and your grace that it deserves to be known, respected, learned, and understood around the world. And we thank you that you have given this mission to us, and we pray for the service that it may render that the kingdom of God can draw on the strengths of the de dedication of these men and women who are serving and teaching and board and in practical ways. Would you bless us, bless this school. May we do all to the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. So I will uh, officially release anyone who has some other activities that they need to do, but we are going to have a few board members stick around. Uh, and uh, I think we've got a couple of staff members as well. So if anyone has any questions uh, or just wants to stick around and chat, uh, we'll be here for uh, at least a, at least a few minutes.